Stacy Hill. My teammate and I at work at Holly Grove Elementary, Denise Schaffner. We both teach fifth grade, and this past year we participated in Wake Ed Partnerships uh, Summer STEM Project. We really enjoyed the experience with Brass Building Gory. We found this particular experience to be meaningful because our students drive past the hospital every day that's being built, so it was something that they could relate to. They've seen over time the changes taking place there. Uh, we also know that our kids like to be outdoors. They like to play at parks. So we took the concepts that Brassfield and Gory shared with us, and we had our students to research, plan, design, and present a uh, design a park project. We did have um, some constraints that we put on the students, just like they would have in any real world construction experience. There was a budget. They had to include a natural element and athletic elements. They began by researching parks in our town. We wanted to make sure to activate their prior knowledge about what they already knew. Next, they developed a Google survey in which they asked four to six questions um, and used a real world audience to get input about what people would want in a park. You can see some examples here of some of the data that they collected. Um, maybe people preferred soccer over another sport. Uh, next, they uh, created a blueprint and a budget simultaneously. They were given a list of prices for materials and they knew they had to stay within that budget. Um, and they also knew the constraints of the project. You can see some student examples here of working within a budget and calculating cost. This aligns with our social studies economy objectives in fifth grade. They were using the data from their survey to make meaningful decisions. So if people said for a natural area that they wanted a nature trail, then they needed to make sure to include a nature trail. Hi, Kira. Can you tell us a choice that you and your group made when you were doing your park project? Um, we made a decision not to do confession stamps because it cost way too much. So what did you decide to do instead of concession stands to save money? Um, we did a food trip. Oh, that's a great example of an opportunity cost. Thank you. Um, can you tell me some real life things that you learned or maybe some new skills that you learned from this project? Uh, I learned how to work with uh, a, a group. Okay, work with a group and lots of different people. Absolutely. Anything else? Yeah, I learned how to make a Google form. And what did you do with your Google form? We made a park survey. You made a park survey. Were you able to look at the pie graphs and look at all the data from, that people had submitted? Yeah. Very cool. Had you ever seen the circle graphs and bar graphs that Google Forms had made? Have you ever seen that before? So, so it was something neat to look at all the graphs. Very good, thank you so much. I appreciate you participating in our project. Hi, Julia, can you tell us a little bit about what you have enjoyed about our project? I enjoyed that we got to be creative and work with um, friends and people in our class. Excellent, what are some things that you've learned while doing this project? I learned how to make a survey to um, fig figure out what people liked so we could put the best things in our part and also how to make a blueprint. And um, I learned that we had, um, what, making a budget, we had to consider about each item and its cost to make the best choice. Next, we wanted to have kids write about what they were learning and to increase their writing skills and persuasive writing, et cetera. So they did a justification for each section of their park. We wanted them to include ideas of opportunity cost. We said yes to softball, but that meant saying no to a basketball court. Here are several student examples of blueprints. We gave kids the options of whether to create them using paper pencil or whether to create them digitally. 
One advantage we had this year was that students were able to collaborate uh, easily and give each other feedback. So you can see an example of students giving each other feedback on the screen within the virtual environment. Additionally, we shared across classrooms. So my students were able to share with Ms. Schaffner's class and Ms. Schaffner's class shared with us. And we had kids look over it, make comments, and send it back to the creators so that they could revise. And they would use that in their final essays. Lastly, we would have our groups present their plans to peers. And of those, we would have the two final bids that we can submit to our uh, real world um, stakeholders, such as our city council, town managers, assistant town managers, et cetera, just to give kids a real world experience and to interact with professionals in the community. We enjoyed this project and we uh, really appreciate Summer STEM and Brassfield and Gory for helping us to provide our kids with real world opportunities.